Hi everyone. Welcome to my um my show. Hold on, I'm gonna sh share it real quick because we're going live to talk about Disney World. Timing could be better. <laughs> um, but we're gonna I'm gonna be taking your questions and we're just gonna get through this thing uh together. Uh let me let everybody know. Hey, I'm streaming. I'll put the link in there. Hi. Been out of pocket for a while. Went on a the last cruise ever. Not ever. For a few months at least. It was fine. Nobody got sick. We had a good time. Hey, I'll say to Twitter, I'm talking Disney World over here. Some quality content. Okay, so... We're just going to be talking about Disney World on this first episode of Disney World. Disney World, if you don't remember, uh, used to be a theme park. It, it still is a theme park. I don't want to. I don't want to be silly. It will, it will reopen soon. They got. I got a lot of money. They got a lot of money. Uh, Travis is going to stream now, but he's going to wait till four. Ha 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 ha. Ha. Yes, Travis. Um, my little brother Griffin was going to go to Disney world got canceled though. Cause of a little bug going around, uh, which is fine. Um, but I am kind of a Disney hobbyist. Uh, there's a right and a wrong way to go to Disney world. Uh, I will not be taking your questions on Disneyland. I've never been there. I probably won't ever go because I, it's way the way over there. Florida is down from me, but I'll be taking your questions about Disney World. Uh, Disney World didn't used to be important to me, and then I became a father of two children, and then doing it right and better than everybody else became incredibly important to me. Um, so we're going to be taking your questions, uh, and let's just see uh, what we got here in the chat. Disneyland is superior. Doesn't matter. It's not germane to this. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot. I need some slower paced questions. Um, a lot of people asking about fig Newtons, you know, they're good. Uh, but they're not at Disney world as far as I know. So favorite ride at Disney world. Well, this is more of a matter of preference than something you could do right or wrong. But, uh, I actually have a soft space in my heart for this sort of, uh, retro futurism, of like uh Tomorrowland sort of um Carousel Progress or People Mover or if you take it to Epcot uh I like the more like imagination like Journey into Your Imagination starring Eric Idle even though that ride is uh has seen better days ever since they kicked the Dream Master out it's been uh a little less than magical over there but I still get a kick out of it um as an adult I also very much enjoy the ride of walking around Epcot's uh, World Showcase and drinking a lot of different things. Not you, a variety, a variety of drinking. Um, let's see. Um, the chat's moving so fast. Uh, let's talk. J oh, now slow mode is on. I'm still getting a lot of questions coming through. That's fine. Uh, so let's talk generals. Say you want to go to Disney world. Okay. You can't just go. Can you imagine just showing up to Disney world and trying to have fun? That's ridiculous. If you want to go to Disney world, you have to know, well, there's, there's various timelines. Uh, there's three different big milestones from where I sit. One is knowing when you want to go. So you can book your hotel room. The earlier you do that, the better. Um, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is, and this will be geared towards people that want to stay on property at the resort, uh, because the timelines are different otherwise, but, uh, uh, you can book that yeah, out, you know, as early as you want to second deadline. You need to know about six months out from your trip, because that's when you're going to make your ADRs advanced dining reservations. Now I'm not going to tell you where to eat at Disney world because that is a much deeper thing. Maybe that's episode two of talking Disney world, but I will tell you that six months out, you need to make your ADRs. Now for my money, a lot of people say, you know, we'll get there. We'll grab it and go, 
you know, we'll do counter service. We'll, we'll walk in, we'll see what's available. No, no, you can't, you can't, you have to make your advanced dining reservations six months ahead of time. That means picking the parks you're going to go to. And that means making your park reservations at the dining places that you want to go to. Now that could change. You could change them. That's great. But if you show up at the day of the park, most places are going to be really hard to get into. And you've been walking around all day. You're in the heat. You're not going to feel like waiting. Trust me when I say it will feel very good when you're there to know that that part of your day is settled and you can just walk in and eat. Now, you should know that uh, you can be, there's a little wiggle room usually, like 10 minutes ahead, 10 minutes behind. That's fine. Too much later, you could lose your reservation. That has happened to me. Uh, there's not a lot of, uh, forgiveness for like, I w- you know, I was on world of imagination and it broke down journey into your imagination. It broke down. That happened to me once that, that they, they figured it out. All right. So they're not going to get too sweaty about that. So make your dining reservations. I don't typically book a breakfast because I'm, you probably going to just get something a little light, maybe at the, the, the resort I'm staying at, or, you know skip it all together. Just power through. I know you're not supposed to, but hey, you're at Disney World. Lighten up. Uh, You make your lunch, your dinner reservations. You don't need to make it for counter service. If you decide you want to do counter service, uh, I would still make the reservation at at six months ahead of time. Revisit when you're like a month out. You can still cancel it, but at least you'll know you want it. If you want to eat at one of the places that's hard to get into, uh, Cinderella's Royal Table or Be Our Guest by all means at uh if if you want to eat at at the at Be Our Guest which is inspired by Beauty and the Beast that one is impossible to get into if you're not booking 6 months ahead of time. So book that. Uh if you do want to do counter service you should know that through the Disney World app you can order your food on the app. And then you can just go pick it up. You don't have to wait in line counter service. A lot of places do that. Some places don't. And when it gets really busy, sometimes uh, some places stop doing the the online ordering. Uh, So that's the second deadline, six months ahead of time. There's calculators, by the way. This is calculated from the first day of your resort stay. So if you're checking in December 1st and and you're going to be there till December 5th, you can make all these reservations for the whole stay six months ahead of December 1st, which uh, is June 1st. So... Do that ahead of time. Third deadline. And again, this is if you're staying at the resort, 60 days before you go to the park, uh, you can make your fast pass reservations. What's fast pass? Oh, gosh. Woo. Okay. So you need more help than I thought. Uh, Okay. Fast passes are booking a specific time or time window, an hour long window to ride a ride. Now, uh, it's good to know what you want ahead of time because these can go fast. Uh, you need to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, 60 days before your trip to book these. Uh, and uh, I, I, I the, 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 you will not get everything you want. But if you want to ride something that's going to be a hot ticket, then you definitely want to get a fast pass for it. Um, I'll, let's talk about what rides to get, and then uh, we'll we'll talk about timing in a second. So first. What ride do you want to get a fast pass for? Let's say you're going to Magic Kingdom, right? Here are the big ones that you want to look out for. Uh, Space Mountain, Seven Doors Mine Train, Peter Pan's Flight, if that's important to you, it's always a long wait because the ride capacity is very low uh, and they can't get a lot of people through it very quickly. I think it's kind of boring, but if it's important to you, book a fast pass for it. Um, uh, Obviously, over in Animal Kingdom, your Pandoras, uh, those are going to be the big ones. in Epcot, really the only one that's that's really big. Well, there's Soren. If you want to do that, then you want to get a fast pass for that. Uh, and uh, the Frozen Ever After, that one is is pretty good. And test test track can be uh, can can be uh, kind of in demand too. Uh, and then you'll see weird spikes with like other ones, but those are the the ones. Now, over if you're going over to Star Wars. At Hollywood Studios, um, weirdly, Slinky Dog Dash is is huge and hard to get a ticket for. Um, and there's a new Minnie and Mickey Runaway Railroad, I think. And that one is new, so it will probably be uh, tough. Uh, Rise of the Rebellion, the newest Star Wars ride you can't fast pass for. 
So don't even worry about that. You have to wait, get there really early when the park opens and get on board with that. Um, if you, if you want to ride that, you can't book a fast pass ahead of time. Millennium Falcon, uh, smugglers run used to be the same, but now you can fast pass that, I believe. So those are the big ones there. Toy Story Mania. Also, if you have littler kids that don't care about the Star Wars stuff, Toy Story Mania, Mania and Slinky Dog Dash. They've recently rejiggered. Uh, so at Epcot and Hollywood Studios, they have a tiered system where like you can get one fast pass for the top tier rides and then one fast pass for like the lower tier rides or two fast passes for the lower tier rides. They recently rejiggered that system. So I don't know all of those for Hollywood Studios. Okay. So those are the rides, you know, that you want to get the the fast passes for. Um, is that everything? Epcot, Magic Kingdom, uh, Hollywood Studios. Okay. Uh, timing. Now, here's the thing that you should that you should keep in mind. This is a pro tip. When you're booking your, you can get three fast passes uh, for each park on each day, or three pass, fast passes each day. You can split it between two parks if you're going to be park hopping, which I don't love because I think it's kind of a pain in the ass to get from one park to another, but. Uh, you can get three fast passes. Here's my advice. Book them for as early as you can comfortably do them, right? So, you know, if you can swing 9 to 10 for your first pa fast pass, 10 to 11 for your second fast pass, 11 to 12 for your third fast pass, that's the ideal. Why? Once you've used your three fast passes, you can get back into the app and book other fast passes for other rides that have just come available and you can see what's available. And that's another ride that you're not going to have to wait in line for. So I would recommend if it's me, uh, book him early. And then after you're done, you can get back on the app and see what is around. So that is, uh, that's a booking you're going to make again, 60 days before you go. Um, so I'm going to look over to chat now as that is slowed down a little bit as I've ignored it as intended. It has slowed down. Uh, Quincy Stanford asks, do you watch Disney Food Blog? Yes. I very much enjoy Disney Food Blog. That's a YouTube channel if you haven't watched it, where um, uh, a woman named AJ like does all manner of videos ranking like top 13 secrets at Epcot, top 14 places to eat at Magic Kingdom, and top 11 uh, uh, candy bars at Hollywood Studios. And I'm really kind of looking forward. There's a... There's a there's a part of me that is fascinated to watch what AJ does. AJ cranks these out. Okay. I'm fascinated to see what AJ does without the parks. I predict like within a month, we're gonna see like top 11 dumb things my nephew Dylan said, or top 12 great places to eat in my bathroom. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, uh if there is any joy to be taken from this. Um okay. Uh, do I watch Tim Tracker? I've not gotten as into Tim Tracker. Uh, what's my favorite Disney movie? Hmm. hmm. Condor Man. That's not germane to Disney World, but Condor Man. Uh, best time of the parks that isn't riding or eating. Hmm. Um, I personally really like if, if you go around Christmas time, now that can get a little crowded. You got to watch your windows there. There's a decent, uh, time that is like the week and a half after Thanksgiving where the Christmas stuff is up, but most of the kids are still in school and the crowds aren't terrible. Uh, and you can go see the, the, the decorations and the different holiday activities, Epcot has like a cookie chase where you go buy cookies all around the world showcase. And if you buy all five cookies, you get another cookie. Uh, they have celebrities reading the Christmas story last year. I got to witness Pat Sajak telling about the birth of baby Jesus. And it was beautiful uh, and very, very moving and powerful. Um, I really like just walking around soaking that up. I'm old enough that I don't need to be riding rides. Just seeing my kids have fun is enough for me. Um, who is Condor Man? I'm not Google. You can Google the uh, Michael Crawford 80s cult hit Condor Man. Why are we talking about Disney? Well, I had already scheduled this months ago, uh, and it, I will admit the timing is not opportune uh, for for Disney chat. But maybe you can put this in your pocket, and it's it, you know it's on it's, it's saved. 
on YouTube, right? So you can, you know, re uh, uh, refer back to it where whenever you like. Uh, do I ever get the patented celebrity Justin McElroy treatment? No. How about, you know, I don't. I don't get any special, not a kind of a special person. Maybe it's because the only film I've been in or will be in is a DreamWorks project. Don't have a lot of ends at Disney. Uh, so no, no special, special treatment there. Tower of Terror or Rock and Roller Coaster? Hmm. Now, I love any theme park attraction that has Aerosmith involved. You know me, folks. I've made my feelings on Aerosmith uh, perfectly clear at this point. For me, though, Tower of Terror is, is uh, a little bit cooler. I think the queue is very neat where you sort of wander through the hotel. Uh, I think that that is, is cool. I think it's a genuinely sort of thrilling ride. I took Charlie on it and it was the first like grown up thrill ride she'd been on. And I, she looked at me afterwards as though I had betrayed her, uh, which perhaps I had. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> have you ever considered going with Lynn and getting the star treatment? I mean, that'd be the dream, right? You can actually buy, I've never done this because like, it's it's buck wild but you can pay for a vip uh trip to disney world and i've read about it in the disney magazines but what you you pay like some outrageous amount and a cast member which is what disney calls the park employees cast member will like come to your resort pick you up walk you to the front of the line sneak you in tell you about all the, the stuff at the park, basically just beg, be your buddy, sneaking you past all the lines all day at the park if you pay them some outrageous amount of money. And I'm sure like dropping a bunch of like facts and history on you if you want that sort of thing. I would never do this. One, it's money. It's like thousands of dollars to skip lines. It seems wild to me. Um, two, you have to be able to argue with your family. It's a key part of the Disney world experience uh, is being able to yell at your loved ones and have your loved ones yell at you. And you're just going to be too embarrassed to do that. If there's a, a non family member present. So I, I, I would not do that. Uh, thoughts on Epcot forever. That is the new Epcot show that has temporarily replaced uh, illuminations. The, the former end of the night fireworks show. There's a new one coming. That I forget the name of, uh, supposed to be this year, but who knows at this point. Um, I've not seen Epcot forever. Uh, we occasionally will watch YouTube videos of like the closing ceremonies at Epcot or like happily ever after the fireworks show they do at Magic Kingdom. Folks, I've watched on YouTube with the girls like more times than I care to to recount. Um, we'll also do like, uh, it's a joy. If you haven't watched happily ever after, you can watch it on YouTube. It's It's a delight, even if you're not a big uh, even if you don't go to the theme park, I think it's a treat. Um, we, we actually will watch like ride videos and pretend to ride them. Like we'll sit on the table and like pretend like we're riding the rides. It, it gets bad at our house. Um, so I love these, these head to heads, F Mickey's Phil Her Magic or Muppet Vision 3D. Okay. So these are your two similar 3D. They used to call them 4D experiences, which time does pass while you watch them. So technically, I guess. Uh, 3D uh, movies. Mickey's Philhar Magic is like you you visit the hits of Disney and there's some like spring water in your face and it's in 3D and it's very loud. Um, and then there's uh, Muppet Vision 3D. I think that one's a little cuter. Um, I've probably seen Mickey's Philhar Magic more times because it's really nice to have at Magic Kingdom one ride that is one air conditioned and two never has a line. I mean, you just wait for the next showing and you go in and, and, and you can watch it. So that's a nice little oasis. Um, between the two, I would probably still go with Muppet Vision 3D, although I do have a soft spot in my heart for Mickey's Fire Magic. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let's see. Can we vape? I am pretty sure vaping is not allowed at any of the Disney World parks. Sorry. Who's your favorite Disney princess? Mm -hmm. Probably, I mean, if we count Merida, I like Merida a lot. Really like Rapunzel. 
Rapunzel has the best songs, I think, personally. When will my life begin? Slaps. Um, I think I think Carousel of Progress versus Hall of Presidents. Okay, Magic Kingdom boring rides. Let's go. Carousel of Progress is an amazing um uh ride where you sit in a rotating theater and it takes you around to these uh four different settings, each split up by about 20 years, I think. Uh, and you watch as uh Gene Shepherd. It plays the voice of the dad, this animatronic dad, and he tells you about all the cool things about 1920, and then he tells you about all the cool things about 1940, and you continue to rotate around him, and he doesn't age, but time bends around him. Uh, it's wild. It includes the song, uh, There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow, and tomorrow is just a dream away. That one plays all through one of the Sherman Brothers classics. But um, So that's a really uh, boring one. If you like boring rides like myself, uh, you sit down for 20 minutes and you watch Gene Shepard talk about cool stuff in 1940. You cannot beat it. There's a futuristic segment that involves a grandma playing VR. Very good. Excellent. Tough to top. Uh, fun facts. Uh, Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow was covered by They Might Be Giants for the Disney film Meet the Robinsons. You can find that on Spotify. It's a very good cover. Uh, uh, second fact about uh, Carousel of Progress. It is the it, uh, it has played the show Carousel of Progress uh, was created for the 1964 World's Fair and and as such, it has play, made more performances, had more performances than any other show in the country because it's been operating more or less continuously since then. It's also the only ride because it was transported back from the 64 World's Fair to the Magic Kingdom. It is, as I understand it, the only ride at Walt Disney World that Disney, Walt Disney himself, was directly involved with, with uh, creating. So, um, that's a f that's some fun stuff. Hall of Presidents is a is equally boring where you go and watch animatronic presidents talk. Uh, first one of those was Meet Mr. Lincoln, I think it's called in Disneyland. And that was sort of a very a test bed for animatronics where they made a Abraham Lincoln that you can talk to. Uh, or or would would talk, uh, uh, which is very which is uh, also very boring. Uh, Hall of Presidents is so boring that my family does not allow me to go to it. So I am going to choose Carousel of Progress for this shootout. Um, thoughts on expensive balloons. Yeah, they are wild, wild. Someone said, once you become a multimillionaire huh, movie star, will you join club 33 club 33 is a secret club, uh, inside Disney world and Disneyland for the creme de la creme. Uh, and it is no, the answer is no, because it is wild. It is like, 30 G's, I think, if you want to just join, and then you have to pay like maybe 10 G's a year to stay in it. You get all these benefits like infinity fast passes, and you, know, you can go to the parks as many times as you want and stuff. I think you'd have to live in Disney World and be extravagantly rich uh, for it to make sense. And in this day and age, uh, I think you could find better things to spend 30 grand on personally, but that's my. Um, why haven't you done the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique? Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is a hellhole where they take your children. Good. That's a plus. Away from you. I think you have to stay with them, but you, they take your children away from you and then they dress them up as a prince or a princess. They give them all the pizzazz you know makeup and do the hair and the dress and everything uh we have done it once if you walk around disney world though you will see so many miserable six-year-olds with like makeup running down their face and like glitter all over them and like hair turned up to here and like it's 90 degrees and they've got this dress it's like sweats dripping it looks miserable Honestly, um, Charlie did it once. She did adore it. But like by the end of the day, she was actually kind of like, fuck this. Get me out of this dress. This is miserable. I'm in hell. 
<sighs> Favorite Disney TV cartoon, folks, that doesn't have anything to do with Walt Disney World. Do you think Haunted Mansion is a good ride? I'm not a fan. Haunted Mansion is interesting. Um, I think that it is has a kind of fun, spooky energy. There's some interesting, uh, 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 a little bit of magic happening there. Like the fact that they were able to get that ride going back in uh, the 70s or, you know, 60s for Disneyland is, is pretty cool. Um, it uses an effect called Pepper's Ghost to make the, the happy haunts up here for the big part where they all dance, where they're actually dancing on the other side of glass and they project it in such a way that it's reflected. It's interesting. Look up Pepper's Ghost if you're interested. I think it's kind of fun. It's not, it's not like my favorite. Um, uh, here's an interesting bit of trivia about that one at Walt Disney World. Uh, and so, okay, when you're leaving uh, Haunted Mansion, uh, this was years and years ago, but years and years ago, when you were leaving Haunted Mansion, you there was a ring, okay, like this, about this size, embedded into the cement where you leave. And people started noticing this and were like uh, creating a story about it and saying that it was like an engagement ring that had been buried there from one of the ghosts in the haunted mansion and saying that it was like part of the theming of the, of the, the ride queue. And it was a big thing where like, you'd find this, the haunt, you know, the, the, the lost engagement ring. And it was a big deal. What it turned out was that um, the, it was actually a uh, remnant of where they had cut a like barrier post and where they had cut it off. It had left a ring embedded in the cement. Fast forward a few years, they have to redo the exit for uh, Haunted Mansion. And when they uh, redo it, they're paving over the place where that ring was. But they liked the story so much that they actually hid a ring in a new location buried into the uh, cement uh, that is actually what what people imagined that cut in half um, truncated barrier was all those years. Uh, which I think is fun. I think it's a fun bit of uh, imagineering. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a fun story. And I think that's a fun as w fun enough way to, to end it right there. Thanks for talking about Disney World with me, folks. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to all of your um, questions, but, um, you know, it was fun. And uh, we'll do it. We'll do it again soon. Uh, I hope you're all hanging in there. Uh, we're doing fine. A little stir crazy. Uh, and Sid's at the hospital this week, which is uh, a, a rough scene. So send her any good vibes that you can. Um, but we are, we are, we are well. I hope you are well. Hang in there. Stay at home. Please, 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 please. You know, don't go about your normal routine. Um, please, for everybody's sake. Uh, better to do that now than you know, ha, ha, the, the, the lots of calamity as a result of you not doing it. So please stay at home. We'll, we'll keep doing stuff. Uh, this has been fun. I feel like I've been talking to friends for the first time in uh, quite some time. So it has been nice for me too. Uh, I will admit, but uh, I love you and take care.